Hello, um, thank you so much everyone for coming down this evening and thank you so much Kim for inviting me to be part of this fantastic event. I would like to uh, start my talk by telling you how through my use of resourcefulness, my seek for knowledge, my passion for life, my empathy to other people and my hard work and responsibility and ultimately by just being myself, I have managed to be where I am at the moment. So um, I grew up Next slide. Um, I grew up in a place called Caracas, Venezuela, and I don't know if you're very familiar with this place, but it's a pre pretty crazy um, town, you know, where there's no law, it's pretty wild and uh, violent, but it's also very, very beautiful. As a kid, uh, next slide. As a kid, I, I used to love to actually be involved in everything. I used to love to uh, play the violin. I wanted to be part of the theatre group. I wanted to be in the dance group. And I also was one of the best students at school, you know, and also in the region. That allowed me or that um, got me to be accepted into one of the best universities in South America, where I decided to uh, embark on five years of intensive studying of production engineering. I've never studied so hard in my life. It was one of the toughest times ever. I wasn't born a genius, sadly, so I had to really um, study to understand what the tutors and teachers were trying to say. Um, on top of this, because I didn't think it was enough, I decided to um, enroll in um, uh, photography courses in the evening. I wanted to really explore you know, my artistic side, so I started studying photography and art history and all sorts of things. And, uh, um, a year into this, I got offered a job to be the chief photographer of a really cool, that way is it, newspaper called Urbe, you know, which you can imagine is something like, oops, which is something like Vice magazine. So basically I will be studying uh, physics and thermodynamics and robotics in the morning and then I would have to go and drive all the way across town to photograph prostitutes and drug mules and Miss Universes and politicians, pop singers and everything that was happening out there. And then I would have to go and study photography in the evenings and organize my exhibitions and so on. So I was really in my source. You know, I like to be in contact with all these people. I wanted to be part of it all. And this really um, was making it happen for me. I remember one really cool story when I was driving with my friends once in Caracas. In Caracas, you don't go out to a place. You just party in your car because if you ever stop, you're going to get shot. And it's probably not by a paparazzi, but by a gunman. So we were just driving around. We were right, driving around town and the police stopped us. And of course, we were young kids. We didn't have any papers. <clears throat> we didn't have any driver's license. And uh, we were all kind of, you know, with our hands in the air up onto the car. And I just thought, oh my God, I really don't want to spend my life in prison or this night in jail. And I don't want to tell my parents what I was getting up to. So uh, I decided to pull one of the cops to the side, to the side of the street, and started to talk to him about, you know, who I was and that we were very good kids, etc., etc. All of a sudden, the man looked at me and said, I recognize you. You came to the police station a couple of weeks back and you took a fantastic picture of all of us and it was published in the magazine. And I just thought, bang, I'm out of here. <laughs> so I just started sort of, you know, selling my services to him. I said, of course, I can come back. I can take a picture of you and the wife, you know, and all the people, etc., etc." And then I went back to my friends and my friends said, what happened? What did you do to him? And I'm like, don't worry, he knows me. I'm the photographer who took the a great portrait of them. So at this moment in time, I really realized that I have hit the, the right thing for me to do. I had found that career that would allow me to be myself, that career that would allow me to express all my emotions and bring the best out of people and also get me out of trouble when I needed to. So um, I decided to move to London, and London felt a little bit like this uh, um, at the beginning. I didn't speak any English whatsoever. Well, I thought I did, but of course, when I came here, I realized I didn't. And uh, I didn't have any contacts, so I left all my mates and all the creatives that I knew out there. And I started working at a company that used to train people how to use an accountancy software. I hated it, but I knew that if I had stayed there for a little while, I would perfect my English. And once I knew exactly where I was, 
and what I was doing and who was who, I would be able to go and pursue my dream of becoming a photographer. So I stayed there for three years and then I quit one day. My parents were shocked, they didn't want me to. My boss was really proud. And I decided to start knocking on every single uh, door out there. I signed on the door for six months and I started claiming benefits and uh, putting my portfolio together and getting to know everyone around me. And I remember another funny story in London. Um, I was once uh, booked, you know, my career kind of developed and I started getting booked by really good magazines like the Sunday Times Style and The Observer and different record companies, etc. And once, um, in probably 2010, I got booked to do a couple of shoots in India. And I remember um, two days before my departure date, I still didn't have my passport with um, my visa to be, uh, be allowed to enter into the country. So um, I decided one day after just uh, spending um, tons of time going to the consulate and knowing where my passport was, etc., etc., to, um, to dress up to kill, to put on my best suit and my best high heels and turn up at the consulate determined that I was going to get my passport. So of course I went to Victoria to the consulate and no one knew where my passport was, but I befriended every single person in there and I told them all the stories and I, ch I shared their chapatis and all of it. And, uh, and then they said to me, well, we're about to close, your passport is not here, maybe you should go and try to uh, see if the embassy has it. So um, I jumped in a cab and I went to uh, India House on the Strand. And on the way out there, I googled the ambassador's name, the PR, the marketing person, who everyone was out there because I was determined to make an appointment to go and see someone important who would help me get my passport. So when I turned up at the embassy in the Strand, there was a massive queue of Indians and all sorts of people trying to get their passports and I just went, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go right through the entrance. And I turned up at the reception saying, I've got an appointment with the ambassador. This is Diana Gomez and I need to go to India in a couple of days. Can you please sort out my passport? The woman said to me, no, I don't see you have any appointments with him. So um, I don't know, maybe you have to wait. I'm like, well, can we just make an urgent appointment because I have something to say and I really need to go on this trip. So, um, she said, well, maybe wait out there. And then five minutes later, she said, well, um, we're closing the embassy. So uh, you might have to go and come back tomorrow. I was really devastated. This, for me, was a very important trip. And I had planned, on top of my business trip, a holiday and paid lots of money and spent lots of time organizing it. So I jumped on the bus uh, on the way to Aldridge. This was a, a Christmas, well, uh, it was a December morning. It was snowing and very dark, uh, not morning, afternoon in London. So I jumped on the bus, crying my eyes out, thinking, I'm not going to go, I don't even have travel insurance, I'm going to pay lots of money, to, uh, I'm going to lose lots of money. And then all of a sudden I, I got a phone call on the phone, someone on the other line said to me, um, I'm here at the embassy, I heard your story and I've got your passport. I picked it up and I stamped it, so you're going on the trip, can you please come back? So I shouted at the bus driver, stop, you know, I need to get out of here. He didn't know what was happening. There was this crazy woman crying her eyes out. I stopped and I started running down the strand all the way on my high heels, trying not to get hit by a bus and, uh, you know, snowing, all sorts of things. And I walked into the embassy and there was this amazing woman standing there at the foyer with my passport. I was in tears crying. I hugged her, so she also started crying. The receptionist came along and she also started crying. It was like a Bollywood movie before even arriving to India. I, I couldn't even speak. I was so excited. I couldn't believe that she heard my story and she gave me the passport. So, um, so I walked out. I asked her what her name was. I sent her a big bouquet of flowers the following day and there I went to India. Um, what I'm trying to um, say with all of this is that, of course, you know, I, 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 I use my resourcefulness, I use my passion for life and I use my social skills every day to accomplish what I have. And I have lots of obstacles along the way. Producing shoots is a very tough thing. Also in my life, you know, I, I try to use all these virtues that I have in order to make things happen. And I use my work in a way as a process of empowering people. I make, you know, I take portraits of people and I try to give the best I have, try to show them all the, all, the, all the beauty that I have in myself and in that way try to bring it out of them, make them feel unique and special. So um, my question to leave with you today is how by being yourself can you make a difference to your life and subsequently to others? Thank you so much. Yeah.